The second question? Second question is Salah. Salah five times. Salah. Yeah. Why do Muslims pray five times and we Christians we pray less? The reason is we Muslims, Salah is a sort of programming towards righteousness. See, normally people, they say pray. Pray is not the right translation of Salah. Pray means to ask for help. In Oxford Dictionary, pray means beseech. In Salah, we don't merely ask for help. Besides asking for help, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other religions, they only ask for help. In Islam, besides asking for help, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if the Imam, after Surah Fatiha, he recites the verse of the Quran, of Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu, oh you believe, inna mal khamru wal maisuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal anzabu wal aznamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rich summi namili shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. First the nibu lalakum tufliyun, abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. Here we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in our salah, that don't have intoxicants, don't gamble, don't do fortune telling, don't do idol worship. These are certain handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. So besides asking, besides asking for help, besides asking, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I prefer calling salah as programming towards righteousness. Programming towards righteousness. And if we analyze today, the amount of evil we see around us, you know, bad things happening, evil thing, obscenity, cheating. There are high chances that we can get deprogrammed. How a doctor tells you, for a healthy body, three meals a day. So our Creator, Almighty God, knows that we have to be programmed five times a day. So that we will be on the straight track. So He is our Creator, He knows that. So if you are a true Christian, even you should offer five times. You know why? Because if you read your scriptures, the book of Exodus, the book of Acts, like how we do ablution, Surah Maida chapter 5, verse number 5, that you have to wash your hands, wash your face, rub the head with water, and wash the feet up to ankle. Similarly is mentioned in the book of Acts. Similarly in the book of Exodus, that Aaron and Moses, they wash their face and hands before they appear in front of the Lord. Same thing, the basic part of Sijda, the Sujood, if you read Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 3, it says that Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. In Numbers chapter number 20, verse number 6, Aaron and Moses, they fell on their face and prayed to God. Joshua chapter number 5, verse number 14, Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. If you read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, that Jesus, Christ peace be upon him, in the garden of Gethsemane, he took a few steps forward and fell on his face and prayed to God. Can an acrobat fall on his face and pray to God better than the way we Muslims do? When you do sujood, we put the highest part of the body, the forehead, on the lowest part of the ground and say, glory be to Allah, the Most High. Glory be to Allah, the Most High, thrice. So all the prophets of the Bible, they prayed the same way as as we Muslims pray. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now, for he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that wait for the spirit of truth shall come. Wait for the spirit of truth. Talking about Muhammad, peace be upon him. And there are various references of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. In, if you read the New Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse number 12. In the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. All of these references speak about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even in the New Testament, Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26. Gospel of John chapter number 16, verse number 7. Gospel of John chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. All of these references speak about the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you're a true Christian, if Christian means a person 
who followed the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, be Muslims, are more Christian than the Christian themselves. If you're a true Christian, you have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and do ablution before Salah, you should do sujood, and you should pray five times a day. Hope that answers the question.